on everybody. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, everybody, put your hands together. your holy name. Come on. Angels bow before you. Heaven and earth adore you. Oh Lord, our God, how excellent is your name. Oh Lord, our God, how excellent is your name. Your name. 
is your name in all the earth. Hallelujah. I don't know if you know it or not, but that scripture, David said, oh, Lord, our God. Amen. How excellent is thy name. Hallelujah in all the earth. Amen. Hallelujah. That's a realization. Amen. And a declaration. Amen. But that the name of the Lord is holy. Yes, it is. Amen. Anybody know the name of the Lord is holy? Yes, it is. Amen. How excellent is thy name. Amen. Psalm 8 said, oh, Lord. Amen. Our oh God, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. We're going to have our opening prayer. Come on, co-pastor, if you would. Amen. Lead us in prayer on today. Will you please stand? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you, Lord, as humble as we know how. Lord, with open arms and an open heart to receive what you have for us on today. Oh, Lord, we come submissive unto you, knowing that you will impart in us, oh, Lord, what we need, oh, God. So we're seeking your will today, asking you, Lord Jesus, in every song, every testimony, everything, everything that is done today, even your word, Lord, that we receive it in the spirit that it is given. And we ask today, oh God, to touch each and every heart, Lord, that's in the building, all those online, oh God. Oh Lord, go in their homes, strengthen them, Lord, where they're weak. Build them up where they're torn down, oh God. Oh Lord, allow your power, Lord Jesus, to raise them up, Lord, for time is this. Give them a mind, Lord Jesus, to want to serve you in the balance of their days. And we ask, Lord, these and all other blessings, Lord, be unto you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Amen, amen. Come on and clap your hands. Hallelujah. Amen. I want you to know, amen, you have entered into this praise and holy atmosphere. Amen. And we're live. Amen. At 845. Amen. Where the spirit of the Lord. Listen, I want you to leave here today. Hallelujah, in a better way than you came in the door. That's right. Amen. That's, that's what right. I want. Amen. Amen. And that's Amen. what the Lord desires of you. Yes, Amen. Does. That you leave. Oh, Hallelujah. Yeah. Changed. Yeah. Hallelujah. Inspired. Yeah. And encouraged. Yeah. Amen. You won't leave here like you came. That's right. Come on, tell yourself, say, I'm not leaving here like I came. I'm not leaving here uh, like come I on. came. <laughs> I need Hallelujah. you to say it. I'm not leaving here like I came. I'm Oh yeah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. So we came, we're just we're just Holy Ghost cheerleaders. Yeah, that's it. That's all. Amen. Because the power of the Lord is here. Amen. I just want you to know that God is a mighty God. Hallelujah. And he is intentional, hallelujah, about your comfort. Can I say that again? Amen. The Lord is intentional about your comfort. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. He is, amen, desirous to show us how much he loves us. Yes. Amen. It's not enough for God to declare that he loves us. He wants to show us his love. That's it. That's it. Can I say that? Oh, amen. Yes. God wants to show us his love. Yes. Amen. I'm surprised if you don't see it already. Amen. 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 Look around. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Yes. The fact that you can look around. That's right. Amen. That's, That's God's right. love. Am yes, I right? Can is. we start there? Amen. Amen. Can, you, can we start at the fact that you know how you're feeling today? Amen. Amen. You're breathing. Hallelujah. Another sign. Yes. Of God's Can love. you realize that you walked in? Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Really, on your yes. own strength. Yes. You may have had to have help. Uh -huh. Amen. But guess what? You walked in here. Amen. 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 Somebody could not get out of their bed. That's right. And even if you could not, I'm telling you now, if you couldn't get out of your bed, amen, you're watching us today. Yes. Amen. That's strength. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So I don't want you to feel like you have been dis, amen, discredited no, no. or that you have been neglected. God loves you, amen, just like he loves everybody else. Yes. Amen. So I'll say yes. good morning to you. Yes. Good morning to our sanctuary amen. family. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. I hope you can tell somebody right next to you, say, I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to be here. Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. Good morning, Pastor. Good morning, Pastor. Hey, y'all, she couldn't wait till I said good morning to her. <laughs> amen. 
Hey, man, so I just want you to know I'm so happy, amen, amen that we're here today. We have a yeah. wonderful speaker today. Oh, yes, amen. Do. This is Youth amen. Sunday. Amen. 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 And so we're going to let our youth, amen, navigate this service on yes. today. Amen. And we're going to encourage them. Yes. Yes. Listen, y'all, I'm going to tell y'all, if you don't take our time with your youth, amen, the world will. Yes, they will. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. And they will oh, give yes. them everything you're not teaching them. The world will give them that opportunity. Yes. Amen. So can I tell y'all, come on, parents. Amen. Yes. Come on, if you love every, if you love your children, yes. come on, let's do our job yes. in the fear and the ammunition of the Lord Jesus. Amen. I will tell you now, parents, if you get close to God, your children won't be far from it. Oh, amen. That's the truth. <laughs> <laughs> can That's I say it like truth. that? Yes. So I'm going to tell the parents on Youth Sunday, let's step it up. Amen. Let's do what we have to do. Amen. So that our children can have a chance to win. Amen. Come on and speak to your children. Say, I want you to have a chance to win. Come on, parents. Y'all talk to them. Amen. Yes. I love it. I love it. Amen. Amen. We're this different kind of church. Amen. Amen. Still holy, sanctified. Amen. And loving Jesus Christ. Amen. amen. But, you know, I will tell people that this world, amen, causes us to change our strategy. Amen. But keep the sanctity of the word and the righteousness where it belongs. Amen. And so we're happy for you. Amen. So our scriptures today, amen, is coming from, amen, two of our up and coming leaders. Amen. Solomon Gibson and Madison Sanders. Amen. Whatever scripture they have or whatever they desire, amen, we want them to share with us what's on their heart. Amen. They almost finished school, y'all, so we got to keep praying them through. Is that all right? Yes. Amen. Amen. Oh, yes. Thank you. Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Bless you, Brother Solomon. Amen. Come on, Brother Man. Amen. Yeah, whatever's on your heart, doesn't matter what it is. The word is the word. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, sir. Psalm 23. Uh, wait, I forgot. Psalm 23, verses 1 through 6. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Thank you, sir. We appreciate you. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now, I'll tell you what. And Solomon wants to stay here all day and hug me. Amen. And I don't mind doing it. Amen. And because, you know, sometimes when we take our time for our children, I'm going to let Maddie read. But when we take our time for our children, you never know, amen, what uh, that does for them. Amen. They will remember it. Amen. And I'm telling you right now, I am here for our youth. I'm here for them. Amen. Amen. I'm here for you, young man. You believe that? Amen. Maddie, I'm here for you. You believe that? Amen. Amen. Where's Ethan? Ethan. Come on, let's walk. Amen. Ethan, I'm here for you. Amen. You believe that? Amen. Amen. Christian, I'm here for you. You believe that, young man? Amen. Uh, 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 Langston, I, if you're watching, bro, I'm here for you. Amen. 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 Layla, I'm here for you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And I bless God for these young. Y'all come on and encourage these youth. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, Maddie. Amen. God bless you. You want me to stand up there with you too? I'm coming anyway. Amen. 
God bless. Isaiah 4, 4, chapter 17 to 19. Therefore the Lord will smite with scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion, and the Lord will discover their secret parts. And that day the Lord will take away the bravery and the tinkling ornament, or, ornaments about their feet and, cat, and their cowls and their round tires like the moon. Amen. Thank you so much. That was Isaiah what now? Isaiah 4 and 4. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. You got a hug for me? <laughs> okay, come on. Y'all come on and clap your hands for these young people. Amen. I love them. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God for for them. Amen. Put me in the key of D if you don't mind. Be Be flat. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm chasing after you. No matter what I have to do. I need you. More and more. Let me say, let me stay right there. Let, let, let me tell you, y'all better come on and get excited about this. Amen. If you're really, amen, excited about Jesus Christ, come on, you can. Amen. Chase after Jesus Christ. Come on. Let me say, I'm chasing after you. No matter what I have to do, I need you more and more.
Amen. 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 My encouragement to you. Amen. Don't get tired of running. More of you, Jesus. Amen. When you are chasing something, amen, it's not just a brisk walk. Amen. It's an intentional, fast-paced movement towards something. Amen. So I tell you today, don't get tired of running. No, no. Don't do it. Don't do it. Amen. This race is yes. a foot race. Yes, it is. We talked about that a few nights ago. Amen. How? Amen. Our Christian walk is a foot race. Hallelujah. Forgetting those things that are behind. Reaching. Come on, somebody help me reach. Come on, reach. Yeah, yeah. Amen. For those things yeah. which are ahead. Hallelujah. I want to know what's yeah. in front of you that you need yes. hallelujah yes. are you reaching yes. for jesus christ come on let me see you reach for jesus christ come on come on hallelujah 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 more and more more and more more and more more and more amen hallelujah thank you lord amen hallelujah amen amen we do need more of jesus christ amen our announcements today amen is coming from amen christian gibson amen up and rising star amen in his own right amen and we praise god for him come on and clap your hands for this young man as well amen hallelujah and then right after that amen we're going to ask ethan to come right up amen and give us our statement of faith as well amen amen god bless you young man Provide us with your name and address and the date of your birthday, and you'll be hearing from us. April is National Stress Awareness Month. This month and every month, we want you we want to bring attention to the negative impact of stress. Managing stress managing stress is an essential component of a healthy lifestyle. Knowing how to manage stress can improve mental and physical well-being as well as minimize aggravation of health-related issues. Special note from the pastors. Let's be intentional about beginning your day with Jesus Christ. Before you check your phone for anything, please pick up your Bible and deposit something lasting in your spirit. Ask God for direction before you plan your day. When you do that, you, you will walk by the guidance of the Almighty God. Peace will overtake you and you'll become confident to repeat the process for the next day. April 19th to April 21st, Fanning the Flames Revival. You are invited to experience this power-packed weekend with Manifestation Family Ministries, Greater Washington Deliverance Temple, and Independent Church of God. Everyone is encouraged to register for each day. If you need more information, please contact the pastors. You don't want to miss this. April 21st. Faith, Family, and Friends Day. Guest speaker, Elder Shannon Blackman. Service will begin at 8.45 a.m. Come out and enjoy the Lord with us. Don't come alone. Your family or friends are waiting for you to invite them. Start insisting they come with you. Habits begin with the first step. Let's create a habit for being in church. Let's continue to pray for the leaders of our nation, our community, our youth, and those who are suffering at the hands of someone else's negligence and violence. Let's continue to practice safety in every areas of our life, of our lives by being watchful of your surroundings, locking your cars when exiting or at the gas station, not leaving items in plain sight in your vehicle, 
Being alert when approaching blind spots around your home and praying continuously, even in familiar environments. Remember, someone is baking on your carelessness. If you have a prayer request, please reach out to the church by calling 301-377-6885. God is still, God is still working miracles, and he has one with your name on it. Order of services. Sundays at 8.45 a.m., morning worship experience. Wednesdays at 7 p.m., youth Bible study. Thursdays at 7 p.m., Bible study. First Sunday, communion. Every second, every second and fifth Sunday of the month is Youth Sunday. Thank you. I'll be giving a statement of faith. Manifestation of Family Ministries Incorporated is proud to represent heaven as we join with every existing Christian congregation that is committed to spiritually improve, that is committed to spiritually improve the lives of others. As one of the vessels of God, we are chosen to promote love, kindness, and righteousness by way of the holy scriptures of the Bible. We are passionate and compassionate about family, marriage, education, and the concerns of the community. Knowing that everyone is our neighbor, we extend to each person the attention that is designed to improve the lives of everyone. Manifestation Family Ministries accomplishes that through Bible teaching, Bible preaching, worship singing, and praising the Almighty God. Manifestation Family Ministries serves the family and community and fosters, fosters unity and love in every ministry within the church. Our church is committed to stand in the gap of those who need encouragement, support, and motivation. We believe that the to touch hearts that our lives can be changed. Manifestation Family Ministries is committed to increasing the spread of the gospel locally and abroad. Therefore, we are excited to leverage every resource available by the authority of Jesus Christ in order to demonstrate God's love towards everyone. Thus, Manifestation Family Ministries welcomes you to explore life and join forces as ordained by God to take a stand as we continue to reach out to those in need of support. Our mission statement is to provide hope to every individual by fostering an environment of spiritual freedom that is governed by the Word of God. Our vision statement is to be, unif to be a unified body of believers that extends in-house resources for those in need. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hey, man, you ain't got no hug for me, young man? No? You got a hug for me? Yeah, I got the hug I'll use, yeah. I love him. I love him. Thank you, sir. I appreciate you, man. Come on, Christian. Hey, Amen. Praise God for you. Hey, Amen. I, I just want to encourage y'all. Let y'all know. We good. We good. Everybody's good. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. Hey, Amen. Y'all know I was once their age. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and if it wasn't for the hugs, amen, of our seasoned saints, amen, I wouldn't be up here today. I'm telling y'all right now, amen, amen, amen. Ask your neighbor, you need a hug today? Ask them. Ask them, do they need a hug? Amen, amen. Ask them. Come on, ask them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anybody need a hug today? Amen. I got free hugs. Amen, amen. They up here smooching, y'all. Amen, <laughs> amen. Amen. God bless you all. Amen. We praise God for you. Amen. And we love, we love you. Amen. With the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I'm going to, amen, get out of the way in a few. Amen. Our birthdays. Amen. Today and this month. Amen. Minister Sherman Gray. Amen. Celebrate her birthday on the first. Amen. Shazer Reed. Amen. Beatrice Charles and Pastor Karen Rutherford. Amen. All celebrated birthdays on the 5th. Amen. Amen. Takira Sneed and Shaquille Goodall celebrated birthdays on the 6th. Amen. Amen. Cheryl Taylor Wilson, Christiana Brown, Amanda Harris, they celebrated birthdays on the 7th. Amen. Jemiah Sanders celebrated uh, a birthday. No, it's tomorrow. 
It is tomorrow, yes. Did I say it right, Jemiah? Yeah, okay. I'm just, yeah, I just need to make sure I say that right because uh, I got enough knots on my head. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. Crystal Glenn celebrates her birthday on the 22nd. Amen. Our anniversaries, amen. And uh, let me just say Dr. Carleen Randolph, amen. I saw on Facebook that she celebrated a birthday, amen. She doesn't know that I've seen it, amen. I saw it. Amen. Amen. I want to wish her a very happy birthday as well. Amen. Um, Minister Sherman and uh, Sherman Gray and Minnie Gray, they celebrated an anniversary on the first, first as well. Co-pastor and I, we celebrated a, uh, I'm sorry, I said, did I say birthday? Anniversary. Amen. I'm on anniversaries now. Okay. Amen. Minister Sherman uh, Gray and Minnie Gray celebrated an anniversary on the first. Amen. Co-pastor and I celebrate an anniversary on the 5th. And thank you all for your wonderful thoughts. Amen. And well wishes and your gifts. Amen. They are so, they were so, so thoughtful. And we praise God for you all. Amen. Pastor and co-pastor Melvin celebrated a birthday last Friday. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And pastor and co-pastor uh, Russell McCoy, amen, they celebrate a birthday on the 21st oh, anniversary. Yeah, I just probably need to sit down. Amen. <laughs> anniversary on on the 21st, amen. And so we want to celebrate them, amen. Um, uh, you know, the Bible says, oh, magnify the Lord with me. That means we invite you to celebrate what we celebrate, amen. Our ultimate celebration is Amen. The name of the Lord, because he said the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Amen. Let me just put some emphasis on this weekend coming up. Amen. We will be participating in the Fanning the Flames revival. I need you all to make it a part of your schedule this weekend, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Amen. We'll be going from church to church. Amen. I will be putting this information out. Uh, no later than tomorrow, amen, the addresses and times of each of these uh, events, uh, the days of these events. Um, I will be opening up the revival on Friday night uh, at Greater Washington Deliverance Temple, amen, and so I want all of you to be there, amen, amen. If you leave at 3 o'clock p.m., you will definitely get there by 7, amen, amen, <laughs> amen. I want you all to be there and let us encourage one another meet somebody new amen that is in the body of christ amen and then uh on the 21st that morning is our first faith family and friends day faith family and friends day yes yes amen our yeah for the year amen our coordinator uh coordinators are our sister jessica sanders and uh sister uh angela robinson and uh is that it they are coordinators right gianna that's right that's right that's right i'm trying not to call her name too much because she got to preach there i want to get her nervous and all but <laughs> amen reverend uh, gianna jackson amen uh, those are our coordinators amen so encourage them by supporting them to be here on sunday morning again our speaker uh for that morning is elder shannon blackman amen of greater washington De uh, deliverance temple and she has consented so gracefully to uh bring a word on tomorrow i'm um, on next week next sunday morning uh i need y'all to be here i mean our praise and worship uh will not be the pastors amen we're giving y'all a break because pk ensemble is going to be here amen and they're going to amen amen usher in the power of god amen i hope you all are excited Amen. About what we're doing. Amen. In the body of Christ. Amen. The Lord. Amen. I will tell you this every Sunday, every day. Amen. The Lord has need of you. Amen. 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 There are no days off with righteousness. Can I say that? Amen. Yeah. You can't take leave. Amen. I don't feel like and calling in sick because I don't feel like being righteous today. We're not having that. 
Oh, what you say, Pastor? She said they're looking for her. God is looking for her. willing, willing vessels. Amen. Come on and speak to yourself and say, Lord, make me a willing vessel. Yes, a willing vessel. Amen. Amen. We're going to bring to you our speaker for today. Have I left out anything, Pastor? Amen. We're going to amen. Bring to you our speaker for today. Amen. This young lady. Amen. Let me just say this. She is dedicated. Amen. She has amen. Uh, an academia virus. <laughs> what do I mean when I say that? I mean, she loves to learn. Amen. She loves to, amen, find out what's in a book. Amen. So that she can apply it. Amen. For her life. I appreciate her diligence. Amen. I met her some 20 years ago. Ain't nobody trying to make you oh, you are who you are. Amen. <laughs> amen. Some 20 years ago. Amen. She don't look like it. Amen. Amen. And so, uh, but when I met her, amen, I praise God for her consistency. Amen. And being who she was then and who she is now. Amen. I will tell you the best way to love a person. Amen. Is to accept who they are. Y'all got me on that. Amen. Amen. If you flipping and switching, amen, you're not stable enough for me to love you. Amen. Amen. But hallelujah. God, amen, puts people in our lives to love. Amen. And so this person here, amen, Dr. Gianna, amen, Johnson Jackson, amen, has dedicated her life, as I said, to learning more about what it takes, amen, for her profession and for what it takes Amen for Jesus Christ. And we are excited. She is a recent recent recipient of her doctoral degree. Amen. Amen. And we are very happy. Amen. And excited for her. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Now, before she comes, I'm going to ask Pastor to come up. Amen. And um, as they used to say, sweeten our souls up a little bit. Give us a song. Amen. And amen. And then the next voice you will hear. Amen. Will be you. You gonna sing? Yes. Okay. So she's telling us she don't need us anymore. Amen. Amen. <laughs> she gonna sing herself. Amen. All right. We're fine with that. Amen. So the next voice you hear, will you please stand on your feet? Amen. As we welcome this young lady, amen, to her home. Amen. This is her home. She's a member here. Amen. But we always like to make her feel welcome once again. Amen. Will you clap your hands? Amen. For this anointed vessel in the person that I ask of you for her, your undivided attention. Amen. As she comes to us. Amen. And speak to us as the Lord has dictated. Amen. To her spirit. Amen. Everybody say, God bless. Reverend Gianna Jackson. Amen. God bless you in the word. Good morning, saints. Good morning, saints. Can y'all hear me? I'm whispering. Can you hear me, Rondell? <laughs> I give myself away. Self away, so you can 
your own and that you give yourself to God. So the title of my sermon is God's Power Play, Flipping the Script on Your Status. And my theme is Divine Disruption, Rethinking the Status Through God's Game Changing Moves. And so today in this world that we live in, um, it's more about status. It's more about you being a person of power, a person of like interest. So we walk around and I guess we walk around and people walk around with these masks on and these masks are who they are in the moment. And so who they are in the moment is who they want people to believe they are. But in the world that we live in, God doesn't pick the person who is the beautiful person on the outside to everyone. God picks the damage. God picks those who's lived in the trench, those who actually have something that can be relatable and usable in this world. So there are three things that I want you to write down. So some of us have pen and paper and some of us have phones. So I want you to get whatever device that you use where it may it be your phone or may it be a piece of paper. And I want you to write these three things down because at the end of the sermon, I want you to remember these three things. And the best way to remember them is either to write it down or to hear it or see it. So I'm using three methods. So first, I want you to write down value beyond status. And the second thing I want you to write down, faith trumps worldly wisdom. And the third thing I want you to write down is rethinking worth and belonging. And so I'll say it again. The first thing is value beyond status. And the second thing is faith trumps worldly wisdom. And the third thing is thinking worth and rethinking worth and belonging. And so today I will come from 1 Corinthians 1 verses 27 through 28. And first I will read you the NIV version, which says, but God chose the foolish things of the world. Oh, and if you could please stand while I read um, the, the word of God out of respect to the word. So I'll start over. That's 1 Corinthians, first, I mean, 1 Corinthians 1, 
verses 27 through 28. And this is the NIV version. And it says, but God chooses the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. God chose the lowly things of the world and the and the despised things, excuse me, and the things that are not to nullify the things that are. And now I'll read the King James Version for all of you, all, for all of you who choose to use the King James, the King James Version. But God have chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God have chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty and base things on the world and things which are despised have God chosen. Yea, the things which are not to bring not things that are. So a little backstory um, for all of you know that um, Paul, a famous writer in the Bible, he was speaking to the Christians of Corinth. And he wanted the congregation to understand that, you know, it didn't matter um, whether a person may have seemed as if they were, oh, you can all sit down, I'm done. Sorry about that. And that he wanted them to understand that it didn't matter whether you were born into nobility, because what happens is you're born into a family. And just because you're born into a family, doesn't mean that you are noble. So for all of you that know Paul, you know that Paul was Saul before he was Paul. And I call him in my words, and don't be offended, he was a Christian slave. Paul killed, I mean, in his day of Saul, killed many of Christians because that's what he was supposed to have done when the life that he was living. But, that, but Paul, through God, changed. And he became, you know, from Saul to Paul. And that was his new name. And when he became Paul, he was a Christian lover. He was a lover of God. So there he loved his Christian brethren. And that's just a little backstory. Now, what I will say is my, fo- my first point is that God re- God's reversal of value. And as you look at it, everybody that knew Saul knew that he was horrible. Like if you wanted to get the job done. Like, you know, Midas changes your breaks. You just reach out to Saul because he could get the job done. He would, you, you, you name the Christian he, you wanted him to kill, he would hunt him down until he killed him. But through that status, you know, Saul wasn't born into wealth. He wasn't, you know, born into this upper society. He had to work and make a name for himself. So, you know, through the power of him being a killer, is what made his name. But when God reversed everything, that criteria changed. He was focused on love, the love of God. He was focused on healing. He was focused on redeeming. You know, he was focused on giving people that true word, that word that you need, that inner word that you need to make you feel sufficient, to make you feel loved, to make you feel wanted, to make make you feel needed. And so instead of favoring the esteemed and the powerful, God selects those whom society overlooks and dismisses. And, you know, these people are insignificant. So be careful with who you dismiss. You know, that teller at the bank who may seem like she's having a bad day. She may be, for all you know, a minister. She may be, for all you know, as a pastor. And she just may be having a bad day. So you need to make sure that when you see these people, you show the God in you because they may not be able to see it because you know what? Some people may know you and they may see your past and not see your present and not because, of course, they can't see your future future because only God knows your future. But by you showing them who you are in the moment determines how they will see you every time they see you. For, for that one reason, you know, in Luke 14, 11, it says, for all those who exalt themselves will be humbled and those who humble themselves will be exalted. So it's not about you giving yourself praise. It's about you praising God. And in return, God will give you the praise. 
So sometimes we get it confused. It's kind of like we feel like, okay, I'm doing all of this stuff, but I'm not being recognized. You don't need human recognition because God already is recognizing you and your prize is in heaven. So sometimes we just forget that. You know, it's kind of like I said, that lady that may be having a bad day, it takes a second for you to look at a person and say, I love you. It takes a second for you to look at a person and say, God loves you. It takes a second for you to smile. You know, turn that frown upside down and make a smile. And I am a therapist. And yes, I do love to learn. That's one of my stronger skills. I love to read. I don't watch TV. Um, because, you know, growing up, that was like the boob tube. You know, they said that nothing is on TV that's important. So in that wisdom that I think that I have gained along the way, um, I was listening to um, a pastor and I heard him say that sometimes we will be quick to say that someone is toxic. And this goes along with the God's reversal of value. We'll, we'll say, okay, we live in a culture where we counsel people. You know, I'm going to counsel you out, you know, and sometimes, you know, um, I have this like new lisp that I've developed since like I lost this two phone on my left side. So excuse me if I may not pronounce the word the way that you're used to it being pronounced. Y'all know what I mean. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm trying to say. So sometimes we'll say, oh, she's toxic or he's toxic. You know, I don't want to deal with that toxicity in my life because I've graduated to another level. But that same person that may be toxic may not understand that they're toxic. And so it's up to you to go to that person and say, you know what? You have some toxic behavior, some behavior that's unacceptable. And then go into that person, not just to tell them that they're toxic, but help them understand how they can become a better person. It's kind of like Paul, you know. He was Saul and God helped him through all of this to understand his love. And though it wasn't a tangible love that he could touch, it was a love that he could feel, a love of forgiveness. So in that toxic moment, you have to then look at yourself and say, you know what? Have I ever been toxic before in my life? Have I ever in my life been toxic? And there's no one in this room that can say that they've never been toxic. OK, you may not see, you may you may not realize what toxicity is because toxicity for me is not toxic for you. So you have to look at a person and say, how would God feel if I canceled them out? How would I feel if God canceled me out? Because all of the toxic stuff that I've done in my life, he's forgiven me. So why can't I forgive them? So with that. And me listening to this, this minister, he said that that one toxic person that you cancel out may be the one person that God sent to love you. And you will never receive it because you canceled them out. So sometimes in our life, we remove people and we don't understand even why we're removing them. We just say, well, you know what? He said something to me that I don't like. So you know what? Boop, be gone. Not understanding why he may have said what you don't like or why she may have not said what you like. You don't have to have a person in your life, but you must love everybody. And I tell everybody, just because I love you don't mean I like you. <laughs> I, am, I, I am made to love you. And so because I love you, I'm going to give you all the chances in the world to get it right in your life. That don't mean I got to let you get it right in my life. Remember the difference. So the dignity of the nothings is my second point, which when we think about this in Psalms 139, 14, it says, I praise you because I am fearful and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that well. So somebody back there, is that you, Pastor, back there playing music? You want me to sing some more? <laughs> or Matthew 25, 40. The king will reply, truly, I tell you, whatever you did for me of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. 
So are we doing it for somebody or are we doing it for God? So when you think about the things that you, are they for God? It's kind of like I said, was Paul doing those things that he did for God when he was Saul or was he doing them for self? And so sometimes we have to recognize that self will place us in a place that we don't want to be. We think that's where we want to be, but it's not where we want to be because God will always get the glory. He'll get it now or he'll get it in the future, but he may have not gotten it in the past, but he'll get it. God will get the glory all means necessary. It's kind of like, you know, what do you have in your wallet? Do you have God in your wallet or do you have Satan in your wallet? So, you know, consider how like, um, and I say this, there's this cat that I have. His name is Charlie. Okay. Now, Charlie's not really my cat. Charlie just showed up to my house one day. And so I was like, it's a cat at the mailbox. Now, mind you, Charlie is this huge cat. He's like this big and I am not making it up like this big. And when he sits on me, it's like he covers my whole body. And if you don't believe me after church, you can ask my mama or you can ask Dwayne. So Charlie is huge. And so um, Charlie just showed up at my house one day. And so um, he I saw him at the mailbox and I was like, here, kitty, kitty, kitty. And he just came running up and I was like, oh, wait a minute. So it's like Charlie was a cat that was abused. Somebody just left Charlie. Now, you know the difference between a stray cat, a feral cat and somebody's cat. Charlie was way too friendly not to be somebody's cat. Now, mind you, it's like Charlie is this cat that is beautiful, you know, and that's how we look at things. We look at how beautiful they are on the outside, but not understanding how broken they are on the inside. So Charlie is beautiful. He's like this. Um, they call them ginger cats. So that's orange in our terms, you know. So he's fluffy and he looks like a, a beautiful little lion in the face. And he has this fluffy tail. But Charlie was broken. Charlie was sick. And so the first person that would, I guess, give Charlie some attention was me. Not understanding that I was going to change Charlie and Charlie was going to change me. And sometimes God sends us things in the smallest form so that we can change. And so Charlie loves me beyond recognition. Charlie like loves me so much that I be forgetting that he a cat. And so it's weird how Charlie sees me and he meows and he aggressively meows because he wants to get my attention. And so I thought Charlie was going to make me late for church this morning. So I squeezed all his snack on top of his food. But you know what? God said, trust me. And in that moment, I was just like, you know what? I'm going to feed Charlie. I'm going to count all his snacks. I'm going to get everything together. Because with that, the dignity of nothings. Charlie literally is nothing to everybody else, but he's something to me. And so God wanted me to understand the value of worth. What is worth without anything? And so it's like the we have to understand sometimes that we cross people out as nothing because they don't look like we want them to look. They don't act like we want them to act. They don't do the things that we want them to do. So Paul was everything when he was Saul. You know, the king loved him. He was, you know, this noble, like, uh, um, I forget what they call him not a guard, but a warrior. He was a noble warrior. He was loved beyond recognition. But when he became Paul, Saul crossed him to over, when God crossed him over from Saul to Paul, people saw him differently. They didn't see him as this noble um, warrior, but he truly was a warrior. He was a different type of warrior, a warrior for Christ. And being a warrior for Christ sometimes doesn't look good to society because you have to change. And in that change, that doesn't mean that we don't do the things that we did. did. It means that you're careful about what you do. You're careful about who you have in your life because who you have in your life can change you for the better or the worse. And sometimes we don't recognize that.
And that's about canceling people out who are toxic. Now, remind yourself, everybody that was with you, you can't bring forward. Sometimes you got to leave them where they are because they're not ready. They're not ready to go with you. And they just may not ever be ready. You might just need to leave them ever, forever, and keep them in time out. You know how, like, you put kids in time out? And I want to... I, I, I think about stories and how stories mean a lot to me because I read a lot of books and I read a lot of empirical studies and stuff. And sometimes we don't really understand that placing a family, friend, or anything in time out may help you get back to that solace of Christ. Sometimes people need to be in time out. And it doesn't matter whether that person is your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, your cousin, your uncle, your auntie, your children, your minister, your pastor. Um, I don't know who else. Your animals, they need to be in timeout. And timeout doesn't mean you love them. Timeout means that you're going to sit them over here. You're going to let them rest. And then when they've rested... And God says it's time for you to bring them back in your life. Then you bring them back in your life. Because they may not be able to walk with you on your Christian walk that you're walking right now. See, Saul wasn't ready to receive what God had for him. Because he was still trying to please people. And to walk in Christ, you can't please people. You have to please God. And sometimes we don't get that. So the next one is the triumph of faith over worldly wisdom. So um, through the selections of the nothings, God not only challenges the societal hierarchies, but he reveals the sub, sub, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, some words I can't even pronounce at times. The, the superiority of faith over the worldly wisdom. While the world may scorn the message of Christ and how he was crucified, and they'll say that that's foolish. There's no way that Christ was crucified on a cross. There's no way that a man could be strong like this with his feet together like this and stand there and, 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 and with nails as big as those carpenter nails were in his hands and his feet. And still be able to say, God, for they know not what they have done. Please forgive them. Because I'm going to go ahead and tell y'all, it is no way that I would have walked that, that walk of death. Mm -mm. Humans, because mm -mm. they were still going to be bad. But he accepted that walk. He accepted that walk. He accepted as a child knowing that he was going to die around 30-ish. He knew this and he still did everything that his father commanded him to do. And he did it with a smile, but he also did some things that the humans wanted him to do. But that didn't mean that he didn't understand what God had for him. So don't get the two confused. Just because his mother asked him to make wine, he made wine. Knowingly knowing that that is what God had for him to do. So don't get it confused. God in the fleshly form, Jesus, had a task. Like all of us have a task. All of us have a task in life. And sometimes we veer off the path of the task. But that doesn't mean that you're not chosen. Just because you're broken and you don't look good on the outside like you see some of these people doesn't mean that God can't use you. God uses all. Look at how he used Mary. Please understand. And if you understand the, 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 the story of Mel, Mary, Lilith, then you understand how God can change. The same way he changed Saul to Paul, he changed Mary to be one of the most faithfulest women throughout the Bible history. Mary loved, loved Jesus in that form. She wanted to please God, 
So she did everything that she could. He redeemed her. And when she was asked by Nicodemus, who did this? And I'm quoting, so don't be going back saying that, you know, Gianna making this stuff up. I am paraphrasing, okay? She basically said that you don't know him now, but you will know him later. So you may not know God at this moment. You may know him later. You know him, but you haven't accepted him. And that's what I mean. You can't see him because your glasses are dirty. You can't see him because you got glaucoma. I don't know. You can't see him because you ate too much chocolate. But like she said, you, he's, it's not the time. It's not the place. And some of us, it's not the time and not the place. And you have to understand when your time and your place is. And so in 1 Corinthians 1.18, it says, For the message of the cross is foolish to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. So it doesn't matter what people think. It matters what God has told you. And some of us run from the things that God tell us because we can't see them. There's no tangible item attached to it. And sometimes I always say, and my mother embarrasses me almost every chance she gets. I'm going to just go ahead and say that because I'm right here and she can't get me. But <laughs> she always tells people about when I was born and how I was born and how my grandfather had already knew that I was different from all of his grandchildren. Because I don't know any kid that loves to go to church as much as I did when I was little. I still like now. But I would get up in the morning and I would fix myself breakfast against my mother's rules. I'm going to just go ahead and let y'all know I was an unruly child. And I would fix myself breakfast. And there was this wall. I swear to got the wall. Like I'm the same height that I was pretty much all my life. There was this brick wall that me and my cousins had knocked some of the bricks off of. And so I would, instead of, mind you, walking around. Now, this is my house and this is the church. Instead of me walking out the gate and walking around. I would hop the wall with a dress on. Praise the Lord. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, 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 mm. Hop the wall with a dress on. So can that look? That shows you how much I wanted to get, how quick I wanted to get to that church. Because I would hear my granddaddy's green Cadillac coming through the dirt, and I'd be like, "Ooh, he over there." I would chew up the rest of my cream of wheat, my favorite breakfast, and I hop that wall. And boy, my granddaddy would be like, "Did you just hop that wall?" And I couldn't lie. I'd be like, yeah, granddaddy. And then he'd be like, don't hop that wall. But here it goes. Every time I would hop that wall. But the moral of the story is that when Christ has marked you, no one can change it. And so if you're marked, you're marked. Accept it. Now, if I would have been not as rebellious. Um, I, I, I haven't changed. I'm still the same. I say what I want to, when I want to, and how I want to, but it's Christ filled. So if I hurt your feelings, it's a Christ hurt feelings. Christ done already told me to say it, and I'm going to say it in the most loving way. And if it hurts, it hurts because it hurt Christ to hang on that cross for our sins. And it hurts him every time we sin against him. And the best way, and I tell you this, and, and for us that really don't understand, through guidance and wisdom, what I have learned is it's not about us. It's about Christ. And every time the devil does something, he doesn't do it because he wants you. He does it because he wants to hurt God. And when you start to understand that, you'll see things differently. It's like a parent. The worst thing ever is for a child to hurt and a parent can't do anything about it. So imagine every time you veer off the path, God knows you're going to veer off the path, but it hurts him. He wants you to understand his love. And sometimes because that love is intangible, we can't feel it. We can't see it. We can't go get it, but you can go get it. Go getting it means that you will understand that you are a sinner. And you will be a sinner. But through repentance, there's forgiveness. And that's how Saul 
became Paul. He understood his purpose. He asked for forgiveness and he repented. And through Christ, he was saved and redeemed. So, as I say, and my last point is, so you picture these students, and I love students for all y'all that don't know. You picture these students and they're studying for an exam. Some of them will study with a professional, professional who is a mentor, a very wise mentor. And then you have some who will rely on their inner instincts. Which one do you want to be? Do you want to be the student? who relies on the guidance of the wise mentor? Or do you wanna be the student who relies on inner instincts? The student who relies on the guidance of the wise mentor, which would be Christ, will always prevail. We don't have enough inner instinct. And I don't care how long you've been in church. I don't care how many times you read that Bible. When you read it again, you're going to learn something new. You're going to read it again and you're going to think about, oh, wait a minute. Wait, is that what it says? So in Romans 12, 2, it says, do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of the mind. And the only way you can renew the mind, like I said, is be under the guidance of and that wise mentor, God gives you discernment. And we have to understand what a wise mentor looks like. Because the Bible tells us. It's like, does he walk the walk or does she walk the walk? Or do they, or is there no walkie walkie and a whole bunch of talkie talkie? So does your talk match your walk? Because I'm the same all the time. It just may not be the good saying, because you know what? My saying is not your saying. And that's what you have to think, because God called us all for a different purpose and function. <clears throat> it's kind of like in the book of Genesis. When we look at Adam and Eve, God never said that Adam was different from Eve. But what God did say is that Adam and Eve had different roles, purpose and functions. We can argue all we want to to say that Adam knew not to eat the fruit. But so did Eve. Now, the difference is Eve took the fruit to Adam and told him to eat it. And he ate it instead of him saying no. The difference is, is that God will tell you what he wants you to do. But you know what you go do? You walk right on over here to co-pastor and be like, girl, you know what? We're going to do this, right? And then she like, yeah, because she thinking that's what we supposed to do. Now, we both do it, and what have we done? Walked out of the will of God. Now, I'm mad at her because, you know what, co-pastor, you were supposed to stop me. But she was following instructions that she thought was godly instructions. You have the ability to challenge. Challenge the authority. See, the difference was Saul never challenged the authority because the authority felt good because he was doing what was good to him. When he began to challenge the authority, things began to be bad. Because you know what? All of the people that's willing to do wrong with you, ooh, baby, you got a whole bunch of friends when the people see that you want to do wrong. I tell you this, <clears throat> have a party. Have a party and invite everybody, okay? And don't tell everybody what the party is. Just say, I'm having a party. And see how many people show up. A whole bunch. Now have a party and say it at the party at church and see how many people show up. Now I'm not saying that you need to come to church. Don't get me wrong. But what I am saying is that when you label it, people see it differently. Because we can have a Holy Ghost party. And for you that don't know what a Holy Ghost party is, you kind of young. Because them the ones where they lock the doors and you in church all night and you just in church all night. You go get a little rest over there in the corner and then you get back up. But what I am saying is that when you're on the wrong path, you may have a lot of friends, but they're not your friends. They're just there for the ride. When you're on the right path, you have the right friends, which may be few. There were only 12 disciples that Jesus chose. And he chose the ones, be it yet not or be it told. They may have not had the best record, 
but they were faithful. How many faithful friends do you have? And that's something that you need to think about. Your faithful friends are the friends that will stand with you in the midst of the storm. You can call them at three o'clock in the morning and if they're woke, they will answer. Your faithful friends love you because your faithful friends love Christ. And I'm not saying that just you got to love Christ to be my faithful friend. But what I am saying is that my faithful friends love Christ. So in a world where we're fixated on status and success, my status and success means nothing to me. God's unconventional approach challenges the societal norms by valuing and overlooking and disregard. So what that means is that to God, it doesn't matter that Gianna Jackson is doctor. It doesn't matter how many degrees I have. It doesn't matter what my job looks like. The only thing that God measures is my heart. Measure the heart of a man or a woman and you'll be able to determine their faith. A person doesn't have to come and sit in here every single Sunday for you to understand their love, but they do need to mix themselves around people who believe what they believe. See, everybody didn't come with me because I couldn't bring them with me. And it hurts me when I see a person that don't understand the love of Christ. It hurts me to my heart. It makes me want to cry. But you know what God told me? Keep being who you are because they'll see the greatness in you and they'll want to follow you because they see the God in you. Now, through everyday stories and biblical lessons, we explore the divine reversal. The concept of God choosing the seemingly insignificant to highlight the inherent worth of every individual. This flips our perspective and it helps us understand the urging matters that are around us. And I don't know if you see what I see, but when I see a 12 year old that's killing a, another 12 year old, I have a problem. And people will argue with me, You're, you are a product of what you see. It's, then it becomes you as you age to change. And I say it all the time, which I'm not ashamed of whatsoever, People will say, oh, when I say, oh, I'm from Compton, California, they're like, oh, my God, you gangbang? Man, I ain't never gangbang in my whole entire life. <laughs> never, never. That wasn't cool to me. Going to church was cool to me. So just because I come from Compton don't mean I gangbang. I ain't got no gangbanger tattoos. I ain't got no gangbanging affiliations. I can't even take you where the gangbangers hang out because I don't even know. We'd be going to the church because, you know, they do hang out there, though. But however, what I'm saying is that stop prejudging people. As we grow, we determine what we're going to be. And I take that back to Saul. As Saul grew into Paul, he determined what he wanted to be through the love of Christ. So we are charged to help understand the lives of the people around us. So with that being said, it doesn't matter what your past looked like. You could have killed 12 people. You could have stole 500 cars. But through the love of Christ, you can change. And it's up to us as Christians to stand in the gap and show people what love looks like so that they can change from Saul to Paul. And so back to what I said. Do you remember what I told you? What was the first thing I told you to write down? Who is that? Value beyond status. And that value beyond status means that God re God's reversal of values. So Saul became Paul. What was the second thing I told you to write down? The dignity of the nothings. Your faith and your worldly wisdom will help dignify the nothings. And what was the third thing? Rethinking worth and belonging, the triumph of faith over worldly wisdom. So when we rethink our world, when we when we rethink our worth and our belonging, 
we will triumph with faith over worldly wisdom. So when you go home today, the biggest thing that I want you to realize and think about for the rest of your week is that if you are currently a Saul, you can become a Paul. If you are currently a Paul and you walk in, you need to start running because we truly are in our last days. So that's all I have for you. God's power play, flipping the script on the status. So So the next voice you'll hear is the pastor. And I want God will perfect that concerning me sooner or later. It will turn in my favor. It's turning around for me. Doctor. Amen. Status change. Amen. I don't know about you, but I don't want to remain the same. Even in my walk with Christ, there is time for change. There's a saying that says change is constant. Seeming to be somewhat of a oxymoron, what's constant never change. But we need, need to understand that change is a norm. So can you help me say it won't? It won't always be like this. God will perfect that concern in me. Speak to yourself and say, sooner or later, it'll turn in my favor. Yeah, turn it around for me. It's turning around, around for me, around for me, around for me. It's turning around. Come on and minister to yourself and say it around for me, around for me. Around for me, around for me, turning around for me. Yes, thank you, Lord. I can see the breaking of day. God is making a way. Change is coming for me. If I stand strong and believe, there's no reason to doubt. God is working it out. It's turning around for me. You might say, Pastor, I heard the word today. And I'm going to be honest with myself and say, it is time for a status change. Amen. I'm going to tell you, the world has already counted you out. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Can you just lie to them and say, I'm still in? That's right. Amen. amen. Really amen. quick, if you need prayer today, amen. And we're going to, amen. Uh, end the service with this prayer today. Amen. Hallelujah. If you want prayer today, just stand right where you are or send us a message virtually. Amen. We're going to pray with you. 
Amen. That the Lord will change your status. Can I say that again? God wants to change your status. Amen. Amen. I see you standing. Amen. Amen. I see you desiring. Amen. Prayer. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we love you. We give you glory for the word that you sent. God, sometimes we may not realize that there's a status change that we need. But God, you sent your word and you said it healed them and delivered them from all of their diseases. So God, we pray now, God, that you are blessed. Oh God, the ears of the hearer that this word has fell upon in the name of Jesus. Oh God, because we can see the breaking of day that you are making a way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we say now, God, make the change in our lives in the name of Jesus. For God, we give you glory. God, that soul that's nearing hell, God, we pray that you will stop. Oh, God, whatever will take them out before they turn to you. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we pray now. Oh, God, for the sick and the shut-in. God, in the name of Jesus. We pray that you would do it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you want to give God your life, amen. If you're online and you want to trust God as your Savior, just say, Lord, I'm a sinner. I've done wrong. I believe you are the Son of God, that you have, oh God, died on the cross for the entire world. Oh God, please, God, forgive me and, uh, and come into my heart. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, Amen. You are now a new creature in Christ. You have now experienced yes. a status change. Yes. <laughs> amen. Somebody get excited about, oh, yes. amen, the status change. Status change. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Dr. Gianna. Yes. Amen for the word. Yes. Amen. 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 Come on, let's celebrate her. Oh, yes. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. We praise God for you. Amen. For those who have assembled here on this morning, physically and virtually, amen. There is no, amen, higher uh, recognition if you're here virtually or that you're here in person. Look, you know, you're here. Amen. And we praise God. We don't know your circumstances. Amen. But we just say, make sure your circumstance is not slowfulness. Y'all get me on this? Make sure your circumstance is not complacency that's right that's right oh i'm gonna put it to you amen 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 yes. make sure your circumstance is not an excuse y'all hear me on that make sure that you're operating out of a pure heart can i say that everybody say lord help me to operate, to operate from a pure heart. Right now. Yes. In the name of Jesus. A pure heart. Amen. I said it. Amen. In Bible study. Amen. I don't care what you're wearing. Amen. Nobody can see your thoughts. Doesn't matter. This suit right here, but you don't know what I'm thinking. Amen. X-ray machines can't figure out what you're no, thinking. No. Amen. A breathalyzer, if you need one. Amen. Can't picture what you're thinking. Amen. Amen. But that's why David said, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. Ah, ah, okay. All right. All right. I'm going to let it go. Amen. Amen. If you should desire to Amen. Bless this ministry. We thank God for all of our members. Oh, yes. We thank oh, God yes. for all of our youth. Yes. We thank God for all of our Amen. supporters. We yes. thank God for our musicians. We thank God for our yes. AV team. Amen. Thank God for you, all of our affiliate churches. Yes. Amen. Amen. We yes. thank God for you and we love you. Amen. So should you desire, amen, to bless this ministry, the QR code and everything that uh, you, uh, every way that you can use amen to bless us amen is right here on the screen amen you have envelopes for those who are here in person amen if you show so desire amen we want to make sure you know that this is amen a house of love amen and a house of concern for you 
Amen. We praise God for you. And you are important to us because you are important to heaven. Amen. We have the same mission heaven has. And that mission is love. Amen. And if you don't feel love today, let me know. Amen. I will show you. I will tell you. Amen. I will be that love example for you. Amen. Amen. To know that, amen, God is intentional about, amen, your success. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to pray especially for, I don't know why I'm feeling this, but there's an application, a resume, amen, that somebody sent out. Somebody placed a resume. Amen. Hallelujah. And I'm going to tell you, if that's you, just believe God. Amen. And, 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 and say, Lord, I, I receive it. It may take a while. It may not. I don't know. But that resume is already approved. I don't know who you are. It may be here in the house. You may be listening. But I want you. Oh, my, my. I just want to let you. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. It's going to happen for you. If you want better for yourself, God wants better for you. Amen. So don't worry about that resume. Amen. Don't worry about the hiring officials. Amen. God got them. Can I just say that? I don't know. I don't know. I, again, I mean, but the Lord just spoke. Amen. It's time. Amen. It's time to step to the arena, up in the arena to next level faith. Amen. Come on and go with us. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We are about to adjourn. Amen. Again, thank you, each of you, for being with us on this morning. On this morning. Amen. Always remember Jesus. Jesus. Always remember. Always keep him on your mind. Y'all get those instructions? Always keep Jesus on your mind. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. That's for you. That's for you. That's for you. That's for you, youth department. That's for you. Amen. Everybody in the house. That's for you. Always keep him on your mind. Amen. Can I just say that? Amen. Keep him on your mind. Stop worrying about what you can't control. Keep Jesus on your mind. He'll take care of it. He will take it. Pastor, come on and have something to say. Oh, yes, Amen. He will. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm just so happy this morning. Hallelujah. For the word that's come forth. We have to really think about if we've made that change. And if we haven't, we have a status change to make. Uphold what you need to do in your life unto God. Because somebody else is watching you. So do the right thing. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. God, we pray now, Lord Jesus, that you will bless each and every one of us as we adjourn. Oh, God, we pray now that you will keep us strengthened, God, to do whatever we need to do on this week. God, for our up coming events on this week, we pray now that you will touch each and every one of us. God, anoint us. Anoint the attendees of these events in the name of Jesus. Until we meet again, God, we say, Lord Jesus, now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and ever. Everybody say amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen.